So good afternoon, good afternoon. We are back again. First of three uploads on the channel today. Big up to everybody who watched all three yesterday and the toll road's kicking off. There's mad dramas at the toll road every day. Um, I think there's been an accident, so everyone's coming to the toll and it's just mad. But um, anyway, uh, go and check out the vlog from yesterday. I dropped the vlog on the More League Gunner channel, so make sure you go and check that out and uh, subscribe to that. The link for that is in the description. And also, stick a thumbs up on this video. But we're exactly one week away from kicking off our season against Brentford. And we have literally got so much dross still at this football club. It is insane. And we've only signed Ben White of any note for probably nearly double what he's actually worth. It's a fair play. They wanted him. They've gone and got him. They've paid over the odds for him. Cool. Well done. That's moving like a big club. What's not moving like a big club is when you've still got all the same crap at the football club um, that has been here for ages and ages and ages. Seven days until we kick off our first game. The biggest overhaul in Arsenal's history, we were being told. Really? The biggest overhaul? I'll tell you what is the biggest. The biggest PR exercise at this football club. And it's run by the same band of merry men that get into the Zoom calls. And it is starting to really bug me that they come out with the biggest amount of crap every single day. Today's latest one is, oh, after, after Leicester have rejected a swap deal for Maitland Niles, Reese or um, Willock, would Callum Chambers sway the deal? Mate, stop writing this crap. Seriously. You've literally just made a story up that's not happened. It's a scenario in your head because it's a slow news day. And then you've put that out to hundreds of thousands of people all over your Twitter accounts. And people are now sitting there talking about, oh, would you swap Chambers for Madison plus cash? Put it this way, mate, yeah? The only way we get Madison is if we pay cash. I'm doing a video on that after this one. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But this is the dross we're still left with at this football club. The biggest overhaul in Arsenal's history. Kalazanak, Callum Chambers, Lucas Torreira, El Nenny, Eddie Nketiah, Maitland Niles, Joe Willock, Rob Holden, Reese Nelson, Willian, Bellerin, Cedric, Ronison, Xhaka. Xhaka's obviously signed a new deal. Rob Holden signed a new deal. And that leaves 12 players that should have been gone. The biggest overhaul in Arsenal's history. The biggest overhaul in Arsenal's history. And we're still sat here with 14 players that shouldn't be here, of which two have signed new contracts. Uh, we've only signed Sambi Lukonga and Tavares and then Ben White. Biggest overhaul in our history, according to this lot, yeah? And the fact that people are still sat there, as I record this at 11am on Friday the 6th of August, and people are still sitting there thinking and tweeting and putting it out on Insta and Facebook and YouTube, we can still potentially creep up the table this season. What would be a good season for you guys? Oh, I feel like we can get top four this season. Can these people come out of their bubble of delusion? Because seriously, stop chatting rubbish and start saying it as it is and how you think, yeah? Because the amount of people that play a game on social media is embarrassing. Yeah, and I see through their crap. Most of these people don't believe we're going to get top six or top four, but they have to be seen as the ultra toxic positive ones because they just want to back everything and anything this club do. Then what will happen is... We won't sign Martinez. We won't sign Madison. We'll end up with Tammy Abraham on deadline day. And we'll end up with Martin Odegaard back on loan, which is the easiest deal. Anyone on the planet could do that deal. Hello, we're taking back. How much is the fee? Thank you. Goodbye. Get him on a plane. Job done. I could do that. It's like last summer when everyone was going, Don Edu. Don Edu. What? Because you triggered a release clause that we knew the price of 18 months earlier. Well, the release clause hadn't changed, but you activated it on deadline day. And all of a sudden, you're now Don Edu. Like, seriously, the standards of this fan base are in the gutter. They're at an all-time low. And it's only going to get worse. Like, people say, oh, you're negative, you're negative. No. My, um, my, my YouTube channel, yeah, is a factual channel. I go off of what I see. And what I'm, what I'm seeing right now is a football club that have lied through its teeth for nearly two decades. A football club that said they were moving to the Emirates to compete when we were competing at Highbury. Um, so they didn't move to compete. They moved for that. We didn't need a bigger stadium. We got told that all the time. Oh, we need a big stadium to compete. Oh, really? Okay, well, how are Leicester doing it then? How are Leicester doing it? Because they're actually competing. Um, so how did, Le how did Leicester get into a position where they can compete 
when they spend less money than us and um, they've got a smaller stadium than us. How's that possible? Chelsea, got a smaller stadium. And uh, how can they compete? Oh, but they got a sugar daddy. They got a sugar daddy. Chelsea has spent less money than Arsenal in the last five years. Why? How? How is that possible? Only Man City and Man United have outspent Arsenal in the last five years. And look at the state of our team. Look at the state of that club right now. Yeah, Man City have just signed Grealish. They're now linked with Messi today. They're linked with Harry Kane today. Man United have spent the best part, I think, of 700 million quid in that time. And although they're not great, they've still got quality, quality players. Jadon Sancho, Varane, Pogba, just to name three. David De Gea, yes, he's on his way out um, in terms of his ability now, but he still was one of the best, if not the best goalkeeper in the world when he was playing in the early days for Man United. So they do sign quality, quality players. Man City, we know, sign quality, quality players. That Man City, of, um, that, I think that's the first signing they've signed with Grealish that has cost more than our record signing. Yeah, And the entire time them shakes have been there, they've never spent more than they've spent um, on Rodri until that Grealish deal. And Rodri cost less than Pepe. So, yes, they've got multiple £50 million pound footballers left, right and centre. But the fact and reality is, this is what we moved for, wasn't it? So when people say, oh, but we can't compete. Well, we can compete because we are actually competing financially because I think Man City has spent, before that Grealish deal, I think they've spent about £890 million, um, since Pep's been there. Something like that. Yeah, and um, Man United has spent 700. We spent over 580 million pounds in that time. Where's it gone? You know, and that's on average over 100 million a year. No, we did 140 million quid a couple of summers ago. And half of the players ain't even at the club anymore. Yeah, one of them who is at the club, our record sign him, gets treated like an absolute sewer rat. Yeah, because this manager don't rate him. You've got William Saliba coming out saying that Arsenal wanted me to stay in England and go on loan in England. Well, why? You can go and play European football rather than going and playing Bruce ball. Like, seriously. Like, the, and trust me, mark my words, William Saliba will end up at Leicester next season and they'll partner him with Fafana. Get well soon to him, by the way. But I'm sick to death of it. At the end of the day, this club has been finessing people for nearly 15, 20 years and people have just accepted it. How about all these big accounts out there? Instead of tweeting absolute bollocks, instead of the big YouTube accounts out there chatting absolute crap, yeah, why don't you start using your platforms to put pressure on this football club? Because I'll tell you something now, if everyone was on the same hymn sheet, you would see a big change in this football club. And I'm, I'm not just making this up. If all of these big accounts start saying, no, we're not having it anymore, we want some signings, we want them now, it's a disgrace. Not just hashtagging Cronky out, because that'll be the next thing. On deadline day, a top gooner, a top red, or a super fan will say it's a disgrace. Cronky out. We need to we need to get Cronky out. We need to get Cronky out. So all of a sudden on deadline day, Cronky out will be trending again. Yeah. We had an opportunity as a fan base this summer after that first protest to carry on going, put the pressure on. And all that happened is Mikel Arteta convinced a load of um Arteta sexuals into going, oh well, actually, we won't protest because we've got Via Real. So let's clap for the team bus instead. Let's clap for the bus. Yeah, you're all clapped. Yeah, you're all clapped. Yeah, literally, you're all clapped. Yeah, because that just totally killed the pressure. Oh, by the way, we lost that match on aggregate. Um, then the next protest was stand up if you ate Tottenham, and there was 100 people outside the ground. So when people want to turn up for the first protest and get the pressure on, and it was a big 5,000 group of people there, what's happened then? What's happened? Oh, what, they, they, they signed Ben White, and that's it. You're cool with that. They haven't got rid of anyone for money, but you're cool with that. Yeah, you lot are the problem. Yeah, you lot are a big problem because, like I've said before a million times, yeah, most of you lot that sit there with this propaganda for this football club on a daily basis for the manager every single day and half of these players that ain't good enough, you're sitting there and Stan Kroenke's just going, easy this, isn't it? We've got the best PR team in the world, mate. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Seven days till we kick off our first game and we're still sat here with the same squad that's last season. And people think we're going up higher. Well done, mate. If anything, we're worse because we got rid of Louise, Savias and, and Odegaard. Uh, not that I particularly rated all three of them, but they're better than the three that we've brought in. So it's mad. Anyway, subscribe, like and share. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and all of that. And um, let me know why you think the Cronky Out movement just uh, suffocated itself and left and disappeared. 
Um, oh yeah, we already know, we already know. Because it was fashionable at the time to jump on the Cronky Out campaign. It was fashionable. And it was getting loads of traction on YouTube channels and Twitter accounts and Instagram likes. And as soon as that traction slows down, it's let's jump on the next hype, which is the Messi as leaving Barcelona. So everyone's mocking him up in Arsenal shirts and posting it all over their socials. Yeah, how about use your socials to put pressure on the football club rather than some Mickey Mouse idea of Messi joining Arsenal, you absolute divs. Anyway, I'm going. I'll tear her out.